the preparation for everything is, is the deal. So this bike's ready to go right now at uh, Virginia for free practice one. It's kind of the calm before the storm. I think if we just keep doing what we're doing, we're gonna be okay. Westby Racing came out on top at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta in round one. Team manager Chuck Cicchetto had some time to reflect on Matthew Skoltz rolling out of Road Atlanta at the top of the point standings. That past weekend, it just clicked. And I have to say that everybody's just kind of doing their thing. You know, I used to get really nervous about him riding before an event. Typically, I'd be on eggshells like, man, it's kind of close to the event. And then I say, well, you know, who am I to say? I mean, he's the racer, I'm not. He, know, he, he knows what the deal is. He knows what's riding on this. He should feel the most pressure of anyone. And we got the VR run coming up soon. It's nice to just put in one or two more rides just to, to feel like I'm properly prepared. It's always nice to be the one that everyone else is, is chasing instead of trying to actually chase someone and gain points from them. So I just got to go out there swinging and try to hold off everyone else. I've got a, a, a nice big target on my back, but uh, let them come. <laughs> Previously on Inside Moto America, pressure to rise. Everyone gives up a race or two, and so we'll make sure we don't do that again. When we found out that Rachel was pregnant, my training stepped up huge. It's helped me kind of find that new motivation. I miss you, my love, and can't wait to get you back at a race. I kind of won the first one, so hopefully it's not a downhill from this point. Baz goes down! down. The front of this race is gone from Loris Baz. Loris Baz came out of round one with zero points, but that only motivated him more to remain as mentally strong and focused as ever, heading into round two at VIR. Usually you have two races, so you always have a second, if you have a bad first race, you have a second race to recover. But I don't remember, I uh, remind any race where I scored two times zero, you know? So it was pretty tough, but um, now we just keep the positive. It doesn't change the target at all. Uh, but we just have to make sure that that's the only um, two uh, DNF we had uh, for the whole season. Bobby Fong, got to come in and serve this penalty. Bobby Fong's rolling start cost him some points in the championship chase, but he owns his mistake and remains intent on just being himself. Unfortunately, I rolled the, I rolled, um, rolled the start, and it is what it is. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not too uh, upset about it. I, I knew right when I started that that start line was a little on a downhill and it's hard for me because I don't start with a brake. A lot of people start with easily holding the rear brake or front brake or just they're tall enough where they could you know keep two feet on the ground and I just rolled and I knew immediately I was like ah and while I was racing I'm like I might get popped for that. You want me to try to race for a win or do you want me to try to race for fifth? You know what I mean? They hired me to try to do a job and I'm human and people make mistakes so I'm still all or nothing but there, uh, I do want to win the championship and you have to be there in the end. You know, you just got to be smart and uh, if you got to take a second, third, fourth, you just got to suck it up and take it on the chin. Get on your feet and cheer for Jake Gagne as he grabs his first Hono Superbike win in his career and he does it in fine style here at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta. Jake Gagne got some redemption after not finishing race one by capturing his first ever Superbike win in race two. 
you know, it was good to get that win out of the way, but you know how it is. Once this racing season starts rolling, you know, the weeks go by quick. So I'm always going to be having fun out there no matter what. But when we can get everything running together like we want and we can be where we want to be, everything is that much better. Matthew Skoltz had a strong first round and tries to keep that momentum heading into VIR. It's Matthew Skoltz with a big win here at Michelin Raceway, Road Atlanta, our first race winner of the season. Just got to go uh, back home, need to train harder, need to train more, and try to come back stronger to, for the VIR race and try to give it back to the fresh and lean boys. When we come back, we catch up with Matt as he gets ready for round two at VIR. Three days before heading to VIR for round two, Matthew Skoltz put in some time on his motocross bike to keep him fit. He made his way onto stock 1000 rider Hunter Dunham's place to tear it up in his backyard. I did nationals um, back home on the motocross park, and then, then I obviously moved over to the road racing scene, but I've always done motocross, and it's been a pretty huge part of my training. And I definitely think that it's the most beneficial thing for me, more than mountain bike riding. Motocross day definitely gives you the closest feeling to actually riding the superbike. I mean, if you can do a half an hour on a motocross bike, you can, can do a half an hour on a superbike, but no problem. He always wants to push, you know, Matt rides 110%. Matt is a kind of a maniac when it comes to, to his physical prowess. And when he comes back from the track, he's given so much of himself that he's completely smoked for like two days. So you don't hear from him. There's no answering phones, there's no answering text messages. He just used so much of himself. He left it all out there, good weekend or bad weekend. He just needs time to recoup. I kind of, just tried to, to let everybody do their thing and not be such a mother goose. We've always kind of babied him and, and, and worried about things. And I used to get really nervous about him riding before an event. And man, he just, he's just, he's just kind of doing it. I know Chuck wasn't happy with like the whole motocross deal, but I'm going to do this so you can can choose to be upset about it or not, because <laughs> it's gonna happen. I need to worry about it less and trust him and rely on him because I don't want to say I'm at a loss for words because I never am, but I'm certainly calm and relaxed knowing that he is, he's tight right now. I mean, he's tight. I know a lot of people, they don't really like uh, doing motocross training, but I've been doing motocross since I was about seven, you know, so it's, uh, I've always done it, so I kind of feel feel safe doing it. Yeah, but I mean, granted, I did break my collarbone, but before last year's preseason, I actually missed the, uh, the barber test, which the team wasn't too happy with, but you know, I've always done it, and I, I always will carry on doing it. I can laugh at it inside right now that he forgot uh, one of his boots at the um, at the house or wherever. Who knows? He might have been. Uh, you know what? I know where I bet that boot went. He's he's friends with Jack Miller, so I bet that boot is actually on his coffee table because when Jack uh, won yesterday at Le Mans, he drank from his boot, and uh, again, good for him. Uh, so I bet Matt paused it, went downstairs, got his filthy stank <laughs> motocross boot, and. Uh, filled it full of milk because Matthew would never drink alcohol this close to the start of a race weekend. And uh, it's probably sitting there with soured milk in it right now. That, that's probably where it is. That's the story we'll go with. What do you think? Is that the story? Is that really what happened, Matt? I bought a pair of boots on the way up to Hunter's house on the Monday and kind of got to Hunter's house and opened uh, the box and there was only one boot inside. So I had to call Hunter, borrow his boots. I was riding one size nine and one size like 12 on the right side boots. So it, was, it was a little bit difficult, but hey, I got to ride. 
But yeah, that's just, uh, you kind of got to look at the, the boxes that you buy, I guess. <laughs> the one bit. Monday, all the tracks by where I live are closed and stuff. So, you know, I called up Hunter's mom actually, and you know, asked her if I could go ride motocross on their land. And she said, yes. And um, unfortunately, Hunter wasn't, wasn't there. He was actually working at super camp, but yeah, I had fun ripping up his track. So thank you, Hannah. Uh, look forward to racing you there, bud. Pretty much everything that gets saw on a motocross bike gets saw on a super bike, but it just gets amplified on the motocross bike. So yeah. if you can handle 30 minute motors here, you know, on the road race bike, you, you, you go. You, you always have to be focusing on what the bike feels like, how the bike's moving. You know, same as when you're racing on the super bike, you know, you're kind of always feeling, okay, how the rear tire is sliding, is it spinning out, is it starting to actually bring it itself back, is it spinning too much, is it driving? You know, so it's just all those different, uh, like, feelings that you get from uh, the bike are pretty, pretty similar. I mean, at least coming to the Virginia track, I checked and uh, made sure that I had two of these same size boots. <laughs> On Friday, practice started off at VIR with the top four lap times within a thousandth of a second. And the top seven were all within the same second. It shows you, you know, how, how hard these guys are working. You know, they want to win. And yeah, I'm looking forward to, to putting on a show with the boys. And uh, I'm sure it'll be some exciting racing this weekend. Like I said, it's a hot, it's a warm one. So uh, we got to make sure we earn it out there. Later on Friday during qualifying one, Cameron Peterson put up the second fastest time behind Jake Gagne, until Josh Heron came along and ran an even faster lap than Cam shortly before time expired. Q1, we actually, we had a bit of a different plan. I think I was the only guy that didn't put a new set of tires on. Um, you know, I know the Yamahas, even my teammate, they all threw a new set of tire at it at the end there. And, I ended up doing 23 laps on, a, on, on the same set of tires and ended up doing my quickest lap on lap 20, which I think is what our race is. I think our race is 20 laps this weekend. So same set of tires, 20 laps in, uh, kind of gave me a bit of confidence for the race as well. I obviously led uh, the first session out, so we're pretty happy with that, but I'm just trying to work on the consistency and the overall pace. The second session made a couple changes. But you know, after being first or, or, or second in every session, it kind of sucks to kind of look at the um, papers and, and end up fourth. Loris Baz made a small mistake, but it didn't cost him anything as he rode off safely into the grass. When you arrive to a track you've never been with your bike, you need to guess the setup a little bit. So you put a setup on the bike and hopefully it works. The name of the team is Wa Os, and I said I have a re walls and the legs, I can't stay on the bike, they, they want to press the eject button. We change the setup of the fork, the height of the fork, the setup of the shock, uh, the height of the rear of the bike, we change all the electronic, the length of the swing arm, the length of the front of the bike, we change everything. We walk again tonight and I'm sure we will be closer tomorrow, so that's, that's the thing, just put the head down and walk and I'm sure some tracks we will be in much better shape. Loris isn't the only European rider in the paddock who made his way to Moto America this season. Veteran World Championship rider Hector Barbara from Spain and a former teammate of Baz linked up with Shivey Racing right before the start of the season. When we come back, we'll see just how last minute it was. Shibe Racing was still searching for the perfect rider for their program up until the very start of the season, but everything came together just in time for the series opener. The signing of Hector Barbara was announced only one week before teams rolled into Road Atlanta. For the first round at Road Atlanta, we didn't actually meet each other until before move-in on Thursday. Um, we went to dinner, we said hello, we got to know each other a little bit through the language barrier. 
and on Thursday he met the team. He was looking at new people, a new track for sure, a new organization. More importantly, I think, a new bike. He had never ridden on that bike, and he's never ridden on um, Dunlop, uh, U.S. Dunlop tires. So that's a lot to do, um, to start out in, in uh, free practice three with the, the top superbike people in the country and to be at ease with it, um, he was reasonably comfortable. He sat on the bike, we checked the controls, he was happy, good to go, and we got started. Sí, fue una experiencia eh, única en mi carrera deportiva porque llegar a la primera prueba sin haber probado la moto, sin conocer el circuito, sin conocer los mecánicos, pues fue una aventura y la verdad que pues estaba muy nervioso porque no sabía qué iba a encontrar y encontré un campeonato muy bonito donde hay una competición muy pura, muy real y la pista fue quizás la más complicada de corrido en mi carrera deportiva. Sí, esta carrera es diferente porque ya conozco la moto, conozco el equipo y me encuentro mucho mejor. El primer entrenamiento de la mañana fue muy positivo, es la primera vez que entraba en este circuito y desde la última carrera no había pilotado. Eh, quedé a un segundo punto cuatro de la cabeza de carrera, que es un buen tiempo, y por la tarde encontré algún problema con la moto y perdimos mucho tiempo para ajustar. Solo di cuatro vueltas, pero igualmente pude mejorar los tiempos de la mañana. Fuimos rápidos y estoy un poco excitado porque pienso que en esta pista sí que voy a poder ser más competitivo. While the U.S. tracks and paddock are unfamiliar to him, Barbara and Moto America newcomer Loris Bass are no strangers. They've spent many years racing alongside one another, and in 2016 and 2017, they were teammates on Real Aventia Racing in MotoGP. In the past, when we are teammates, your, uh, the father Loris come in every race, and maybe sometimes we are fighting, or I fear than Loris, the first guy come to happy, uh, the father of Loris, no? He's, the Loris has a, a, tiene unos valores muy, muy buenos en la vida. Es muy valiente, es un piloto de corazón y no tanta cabeza. Next time we learn English because we stay here my, my level for speaking is, just is, is better, yeah. but <laughs> at the moment he's not here, it's, okay. it's coming better. It's unseasonably hot in Virginia for round two, but that didn't stop Jake Gagne from setting a new outright lap record in Q2. I'm living the dream, man. I'm having fun. I'm racing the motorcycles and uh, at some of our favorite tracks. And um, when everything is rolling good, you know, you get to enjoy it a little bit more. So I'm enjoying it. And, you know, obviously we got a lot of hard work to come and we got a long year ahead. So we keep our heads down and stay focused and just keep plugging away, doing our thing and worry about what we got to worry about and nobody else. And, I think um, everything will start to come together good. Josh Heron was running a little hot too when traffic prevented him from getting another clean flying lap and a faster time. I lost like two seconds on that lap and had to claw back and luckily I was able to get there, but but it's uh, it's frustrating sometimes. I've, I've been the lapper before, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's always scary when you know somebody's coming from behind a lot faster than you, so it's, it's hard to do the right thing all the time. Um, but it's, uh, it's just one of those things that happens in racing. I, I show my emotions on the track a little bit more than everybody else, but it doesn't mean that uh, I wouldn't go to dinner with the guys right after. I just, just get angry at, at the moment. <laughs> Get going. 
Ono Superbike, race number one from BIR. And away we go. Gagne with a good one. Bass looks like he's going to get swallowed up by he's a couple get bikes. Swallowed up. Bad. Heron got a good jump. He's going to jump up into oh, what is it? Skulls in deep. deep. Very deep is the Westby Racing Yamaha, but he gathers it back up. No drama, and that gets him to second spot. We got off to a killer start. Didn't see anybody try to come by me in one, so I figured, all right, if I can just put some laps together, stay smooth, do what do what we know this bike can do, then it, you know, hopefully we can just maybe inch away, and we were kind of inching away from Matt there. As Gagne and Skull started to pull away from the field, Bobby Fong, who was running in third, had some issues. Bobby Fong oh. looks like he's is he? He's just Looks like he's got problems. So Bobby Fong was only seven tenths of a second behind Matthew Skultz in third spot. But now the M4X star Suzuki rider Fong with an issue, and he drops back to the battles going on with those stock thousand machines. You said you saw something hanging off a couple of laps ago, Greg. I'm wondering if something has gone wrong. Is he able to ship the bike right now? Looks like he is. But this is going to put Baz and Heron and Peterson in that battle for third now. I missed my start a little bit. The clutch was sleep, sleeping, so I went B6, but I know usually we are so strong at the end of the race. So I keep it calm, I wanted to bring it home, so I, I came back over to Cameron and Josh. For the majority of the race, Baz, Heron, and Peterson were battling for the last spot on the podium, each of them trading passes as they tried to protect the third position while they were running out of laps to make it stick. He's got to get himself a move over to the right now and make it to where Baz doesn't have that gap to close down and go up underneath there him like you see it happening. So again, Baz has on the brakes and he's able to get position and Cam Peterson gets pushed wide with Baz with a hand in the air saying, I made a mistake. Yep. And you know what, Baz is going to do that because if you're going to leave that door wide open, that somebody's going to come through. I'm having a pretty gnarly three-way battle for third there towards the end of the race. You know, unfortunately, my teammate Bobby had a mechanical um, so yeah, that, that bumped us up one position, but yeah, we got into a pretty gnarly battle for, for third place and um, you know, it, it was cool riding against Josh and, and Loris, I, I definitely learned a bunch. Greg, we got three to go, it's every man for himself. I would have loved to have seen Camp just move back over to the right once he makes that pass and make it to where somebody's got to go around the outside of you down in that corner, not keep that gap open to where they can go up underneath you. Every lap I was overthinking Cameron or Josh, they pass back on the straight, and I pass back in turn one, and I pass back on the straight. And I had a big, big battle, like, I know Cameron was not, uh, not happy at the end, but I didn't do anything crazy. I, I really didn't think I, I touched him, but uh, he said his airbag came twice, <laughs> when I, because I touched his elbow when we break. But it was clean, I mean, uh, it was close battle, it was clean. I drove past. Loris a few times and then I felt like my only option was because he outbreak me every time was to try to ride around the outside of him. Yeah things got interesting a few few times there. It was like four laps in a row where you know he would just ride it up my inside and, and hit me. He actually hit me so hard the one time that my airbag went off in my suit. So uh, yeah is is what it is. It was fun, you know I, I learned a bunch but uh, Honestly, I had four laps in a row, I was, I was kind of like, what are you doing, man? It's, you know, not even the last lap of the race, and he was riding pretty, pretty hard and a little bit dirty, I'm not going to lie, but it's racing, man. I love it. I can't wait to give it back to him tomorrow. Peterson again loses position on the inside, and now Josh Heron's right there as well, trying to sneak up the inside. These guys going all over the racetrack, trying to find some daylight. Heron has to check up as Peterson rolling through turn number three, heading to turn number four. And look at Heron, he's gonna take a shot up underneath camp two. Wow, so there goes Josh Heron with the door open. Cam Peterson getting roughed up right now. Got by Cam with two ups to go, lap and a half. Had to run him wide a little bit just because I didn't want him to square it back underneath me. So got by him and just put my head down and, and tried to, to get by Baz. While the battle for third rages on, 15 seconds behind him, Jake Gagne finishes 11 seconds ahead of Matthew Skolds in second. Jake Gagne just ran a perfect race, Greg. I mean, he got out front early, put down those 24s as quickly as he could. And he has just been long gone and sailing. He's 9.6 seconds out front. We came into the season thinking there's probably going to be three, four, five, six different winners. This guy's got a whole other idea about that. I like being out there with the clear track. You know, I've always been that way. I'm a, I'm a lone wolf. So get me out there on the track, give me some clear space, and I can kind of get in my flow and, and crank out my laps. And um, there's a lot coming at you fast. You got to be focused. You got to be on point. We've all known that if you, you slip 
for a moment here and there, that's when bad stuff can happen. And here's the battle for third. It looked like Heron went up underneath Baz up in the turn 10 area. So these guys have now swapped. I said Heron was going to take a shot. Now, will Baz do the same as they go through here? He's not going to be close enough. Heron gets a really nice drive out of that area there. And I don't think Baz is going to be able to get through on him. Yeah, this is the thing. If Cam Peterson can get close enough, if Baz is close enough to Josh Heron, I think Peterson has a shot at it. But this guy right here, Jake Gagne, coming across the line, taking the checker flag and the win, his second in a row. And now coming to the stripe, is it going to be a bookend for Fresh and Lean Attack Performance Yamaha? Matthew Skultz in second place, oh. and Josh Heron will take third. And Camp Peterson, I think, snuck under Baz. I'm not sure, though. Nope, oh. six, ten, six thousandths of a second for Loris Baz in fourth place over Cam Peterson. Was excited that we had the pace to beat those guys, but want to be closer to the front. But at the end of the day, you know, in my eyes, I'm on the best bike out there, but my teammate has the same bike. And, um, you know, I want to be fighting with him at the end. I don't want to be getting left behind by him. My max heart rate was 191. Burned 830 calories, average heart rate 164 for a race. Mmm, mmm, that's good. Put up a <laughs> 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 nah, I'll stop. Coming up, teams dig deep to try and close the gap to Jake Gagne. And Melissa Paris talks about the challenges of working and living on the road a few weeks after having her second child. I'm Melissa Paris. I'm crew chief for Hunter Denham, the number 19 in Stock 1000. Moto America brings people with a passion for racing together in a way that often feels like family. For Melissa Paris, being at the racetrack these days is exactly that. Last year working with Cam was such a good time and like a great experience. I felt like I really learned a lot. And it was pretty cool coming into this year having a couple different opportunities available to me for once. Um, but things were a little bit tricky because I knew we were going to have a new baby and I was going to be missing the first race of the year. It was really important to be in like a really good environment and the other side of it is like feeling like I could help Hunter who's, you know, he's like a little brother to me. So the whole thing just made perfect sense. Me and Melissa uh, and her husband Josh have been really close uh, last couple of years. Um, in the wintertime when it's cold in Georgia I usually drive all my toys out to California and stay with them and just train with them so I think that's how the kind of relationship started and then this year was going to be tough with her to commit to a, um, a full season with a team that she wasn't really close with so when I approached her and asked her um, for you know the crew chiefing job she she had to think about it for a minute and see where the cards fell and I it was the best opportunity for her to be able to have a newborn and still do the job she loves to do. I'd be lying if I said it wasn't like tricky as far as managing everything with the kids and the dog and partridge and a pear tree and all the things, <laughs> but um, it went really well. I think if I was working for some teams it might have been a lot harder, but I'm really lucky that um, everyone in the Dunham family and the Westby team who we're working with, like they're all like family. So when my mom comes under the canopy and I'm like simultaneously trying to feed a baby and like work, look at data, um, everyone's cool about it, you know? So, and I feel comfortable, you know, with all of it. And it's, it's hard, but it's a good hard. Racing runs in the family from Melissa Paris. Not only is she an established professional racer, mechanic, wife, and mom, Four-time Superbike champion, Josh Hayes, is her husband. Josh acts as a coach and mentor for several riders in Moto America, including Melissa's rider, Hunter Dunham. We left the house with a two-week-old baby in the front of a pickup truck pulling a travel trailer to leave for eight weeks on the road racing. So all I can say is we're very excited that we survived and we're here. <laughs> and um, we are all very, very tired. But uh, so far, it's been quite fulfilling. It's great to be able to uh, go out here and work with my guys at the track and then go back to the, uh, to the bus and relax and play on the scooter with Hawk and hold Brettley a little bit. And uh, right now, 
it, it's hard in the moment and then you'll look back at it and talk about what a great story it is. But right now I do got to say it's we're both exhausted and it is a challenge and we're just figuring it out every day. When we were racing, it was so important, I think to both of us, but especially me, to keep our identities separate. I had a chip on my shoulder that I felt like people thought I only got what I got because of Josh and what he had going on, and it was so important for me to like draw a line. Not even just for what other people saw, but for me to know like at the end of the day, like I got what I got because of what I did. Or as we've both kind of like moved into new roles, it's fun to actually get to work together and be on the same team. You know, Melissa and I, we, we kind of always had our own roles at the racetrack. They were just both racing. So we really didn't get to talk a whole lot throughout the weekend, but oh, how things have changed and developed over the years, you know? And, um, you know, she started working on her own team projects quite a while back. She built her own teams for a long time where she ran as the rider and the crew, as you know, a lot of guys out there are doing in this day and age. And it was never easy, of course, to continue your own program going. And then a good opportunity came along to work with Cam Peterson, and she was able to help him win that Stock 1000 Championship. And I think that was very vindicating for her because uh, being a female and a former racer, you know, she was able to put together the right pieces and, and come up with the goods, and it, it, I think it really raised her stock. Racing is who I am, you know, it's like what makes me happy and makes me feel like me, and when Josh and I decided to start a family, like, that was a big part of it. That was why we waited so long, because we wanted to find a way to have all the things we want, you know? Racing's a big part of it, and I, I'm just not willing to give that up, and and the other side of that is I want my kids to see me working and I want them to see me working at a job that I love and that I don't get up in the morning and I'm like, oh man, I have to go to work. Like they see me like happy to get out the door and go do my thing and um, yeah, I saw, you know, like I grew up seeing my dad work hard and I think that's so important for kids. So I hope that that makes an impression on them. Can I have a smooch with this dirty face? Oh, thanks buddy. <laughs> like I'm out of here. You're like, I got to stick it. When we come back, Jake Gagne goes for three wins in a row. It's Sunday and time for race two at Virginia International Raceway. Moto America was last here at VIR two years ago, and a lot has changed. The only remaining superbike rider from the top four finishers in both races is Matthew Skoltz, who took fourth in race two. Bobby Fong was on track, but fighting for the Super Sport Championship when he suffered a crash in the rain. That looks like Bobby Fong. Oh, maybe Fong this is front. I'm gonna it. tell you something. Yep. I saw Nick McFadden, both legs off the ground, down the front straightaway a little bit ago. And now with this right here, don't like seeing this at all. I wake up at five this morning. I was thinking about many things that I wanted to try on the bike. So we walk, we walk hard. And that's, that's the only thing that my dad always told me. Uh, walk hard and the reason will come. So I walk hard and the guys in the team do the same. So we cannot be unhappy today. The weather's gonna be the same. So it's gonna be super hot, super humid. Like. We just gotta gotta have a better setup for our bike. We're gonna kind of go back to what we had in qualifying. I felt comfortable with the bike. I'm happy to be battling for podiums, and especially riders of that caliber like Loris and, and Josh. They they incredible world class riders. So at the same time, I'm I'm not upset, but to be that far behind Jake is is it's not good for myself and the team. You know, I, I need to put the bike on the box for the team. Yeah, there's definitely a couple things that we want to do better, and just make a couple little adjustments to try to make the bike a little smoother to ride, get a little more grip. We can make a couple little electronic changes. You know, there was a couple little sections where I was struggling, um, you know, and I think Matt and some of those guys were a little faster here and there. Five minutes forward in the horn, please. Green flag, green light, is sit out. All stations are waving green. This is our signing lap period for Auto Superbike Race 2. Boxer coming out. The grid is formed up, but America has indicated we are ready to rock and roll. Revs are going up. Watch for that red light. Here we go. 
And away we go, and Heron. Bad start for Josh Heron, huh? Yeah, You're looking at the same thing sleeping. I was. But wow, look but at Jake Gagne. Gagne. Get away. He is gone. Oh. Camp Peterson's getting squeezed between Skultz oh, and Bass. Is there any room? And they all Everybody's kind of get each other's way there. Wow, so oh. nobody giving an inch, and now all of a sudden they are in the back, and look who finds himself in second place. Panera Bread Ducati, Kyle Wyman. Kyle Wyman jumps up into second again, and Heron gets a huge break from a bad start to Baz and Peterson and Skultzy coming together in turn one. Baz was able to recover and get himself into fourth at least. Camp Peterson's coming from dead last. Kind of what I saw forming in front of me was a little bit of uh, mayhem, so. I saw some riders get into each other and, and it, it was kind of like it opened up the whole bottom of the racetrack for me to just set up and go t tight to the inside and find myself in second place coming out of turn one. I was like, all right, let's see what we can do from here. Kyle Wyman found a clean path out of the bottleneck in turn one, but Matthew Skoltz wasn't as fortunate and found himself back in 14th. You know, there's quite a big difference in, in um, speed from the front couple guys to the mid-pack riders, so I was just making sure that I wasn't trying to do anything silly and end up taking um, myself and somebody else out. You can see Heron now in the draft of that Panera Bread Ducati of Kyle Wyman. He's going to try to swing up underneath him, and he does. So Kyle goes back to third, Baz is fourth. And then we're going to look at Hector Barbara in fifth with Bobby Fong coming from 12th to move himself up to sixth place. It's really hard when, when you're a racer at heart and you want to you wanna be in that fight. So um, today was a great day for, for me to feel what it's like to be back in the fight. Baz with a small mistake, allowing both Heron and Wyman to pull away. Wyman is now having a look at Heron as they go into turn seven and will make that pass. What this sport is about is being able to immerse yourself in it, exert yourself fully, and and be, you know, dizzy and cross-eyed at the end of it, you know, but so uh, fulfilled. I'm looking forward to when that feeling means that we're on the top step. Loris Baz under braking. He's trying to find a spot. Oh, he's so tight. Is he going to hold on to it? So Loris Baz will take over second spot. Honestly, I didn't enjoy riding the bike any lap this weekend. I had fun every lap in Atlanta, apart from the last one from race one and the last one from race two. And I didn't enjoy any lap here. The bike was just so hard to ride. The battle for third now starts to heat up with Hector Barbera putting himself into fourth spot. He's going to try to chase down Josh Heron. So there's the Spaniard getting familiar with this Shivey Racing BMW and American racetracks and American-made Dunlop tires. I've always said I do not see a reason why we cannot win even with this bike, and that still stands. Um, Hector's bringing the, the focus, the riding style, and the, and the capability that we, you know, we still aspire to do that. As if the battle for the last spot on the podium wasn't tough enough, here comes championship points leader Matthew Skoltz to raise the pressure. Matthew Skultz advances his position around Kyle Wyman, and now he's going to set his sights on Hector Barbara. I got caught up in a pretty good, good battle with uh, um, Josh Heron. Um, he's a fighter, and he wasn't willing to kind of give up there, and that slowed us down, but I mean, that's just part of it. Is Hector Barber going to make a move? You can see when they bend, you know, the, lean the bikes over for the king, that Barber doesn't have it on the straightaway, but he's going to try to do it on the oh, brakes. He's deep. He's, he's going to run off. off the track. So he outbroke himself, and that's it for him for his chance on a podium. It's always important to have the possibility of good results, to be motivated. Um, I see now with Hector all the things that line up that I think will bring our greatest chance for success. Here comes Skoltzy up the inside. So hello, Josh Heron, as Heron resets his hand on the throttle, trying to fight back. Wyman's trying to take advantage of it, but it's not going to happen at the moment. So now Matthew Skoltz will take over third spot. So it's Gagne, Baz, and now Matthew Skoltz under the bridge into turn number seven, and Skoltz will hold on to it. I mean, I kind of have to, to be happy finishing third after being that far back, but, you know, I think that we definitely had the pace to be second. Um, I know after winning the first race, you kind of feel that I should be winning every single race, but I think Jake's clearly shown that he is um, the guy that, that we need to be aiming for right now. Jake Gagne on his way to the checkered flag for the second time. Hono Superbike race number two at VIR, and he will take another victory. Incredible ride for Gagne. And here comes Loris Paz. 
in his maiden podium finish on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati New York entrance. He'll come across the line, and Baz will get second place to Sculpt's third, Heron in fourth, Bobby Fong in fifth. We felt big in Atlanta, both the team and high, and uh, we recover here, we got our first podium, and we just, we're just gonna improve from it. My mom's birthday is, in, is the 5th of June, so I will be home. So uh, it's a cool. I don't have to buy anything. I just bring that, and she's uh, the most happy mom in the world. So I'm happy. I will bring it home. <laughs> when we come back, a look ahead to the next stop at Road America. After only two rounds of racing, it's clear the competition will be fierce in the fight for the championship all season. It's still early, and points are close leading into Wisconsin for round three. Matthew Skoltz maintains his points lead over Gagne by just six points. Josh Heron currently sits third, while teammates Bobby Fong and Cameron Peterson are tied for fourth. Road America, the longest circuit on our calendar, is a rider favorite among Moto America veterans, but will be a challenge for the newcomers in our series. Every game you buy on a PlayStation, since I'm five years old, you have Road America as the first track coming up. So I'm really looking forward. All my friends that are big fans from US sports and yeah, back in Europe, they just say, oh, you're gonna ride Road America. It's, the funny, it's so cool and just famous all around the world. I cannot wait to get up there to St. John's the Baptist, get into some bratwurst, get into some storytelling. The, our fans up there are mega, like mega. So that part of the country is always really good for us. Even if we stink, we, we have a great time at Elkhart. We're really looking forward to going there for sure. I think right now it's pretty obvious that Jake Kanye has the pace of everyone else at this point. It's just about trying to fit figure stuff out and try to catch up to Jake. Yeah, I teased him a bit yesterday. I didn't know what the gap was. I said, would you win by eight seconds? I said, Cameron would have won by 12. And he, and he looks at me, gives me the mean look. And of course, John had a few choice words for me. And, and then I say, hey, man, I'm just kidding. I, so of course, he went out and won by, what, 14 or something today. He did win by 11.8 yesterday. So he said it was really easy. I just think he's, he's finally gelled with the bike. We kind of changed the scenery for him a bit. With Cameron gone, he, I think he's still Maybe, I don't know if he can say it, he would say this, but I think he's fighting Cameron a little bit for those track records and those pole positions and the, and the gap for the win and all that. So he's trying to, I'm pretty sure he's still trying to prove something. Jake's really feeling that motorcycle. He's in a good spot. So good old Marshall, who works remotely, he did most of the work on the electronics. I think that was probably the thing that we worked on the most this weekend. Yeah, this is a cell modem. So my electronics guy, Darren Marshall, he's in Canada. He hasn't been able to make it to any of the races, um, which is a bummer. You know, we all, I wish Darren was here so bad and make a little, everything a little easier. So that's, that was a joke. He's the modem, you know, we have to take him, we have to take the little black box to the pit wall with us. And, you know, we're on the phone with him after the sessions, after the race, and he can kind of do his thing. And he's, for not being here, it's, it's working out really, really well. So hats off to him. And it was cool to see him on the podium with us, you know. <laughs> With Jake Gagne riding better than ever and looking more and more like the one to beat, who will step up to meet the challenge?